Hi, I'm Steve McConaughey, the educational consultant here at ADM. In today's webinar, we're going to learn when to use Dentapreg splints, what are their benefits, and a step-by-step -step guide to making Dentapreg splints. The entire webinar will take about 15 minutes. This kind of splint can be used in a variety of clinical applications, such as stabilization of periodontically compromised teeth, as a palliative treatment, or as a part of the curative procedure post-orthodontic retention, and stabilization of traumatically compromised teeth. The service life of Dentaprig splints varies on the clinical situation from several weeks for post-trauma splints to several months or even years for post-orthodontic retentions or palliative splints. You've probably faced some problems while making splints in the past. For wire splints, there's the risk of gingival irritation, allergies to metals, and of course there's the question of aesthetics. On the other hand, with dry fibers, you face low reliability, and in order to increase reliability, you need to add extra layers of composite, which creates an unnecessarily bulky application. For the design of the splint, it's important to take into account how splints function. With teeth that are mobile, there is an undesirable action. A splint is placed in order to react to this. This movement creates tension within the splinting material, Therefore, an ideal splinting material is able to deal with the high tensile strength required to distribute these forces and keep the mobile teeth held in their appropriate position. Restorative composites have low tensile strength, and that is the reason these types of splints have low predictability and often fail. Conversely, metal wires generally have high tensile strength, and therefore splints made of metal wire are fairly reliable, albeit at the cost of possible irritation of the gingiva and poor aesthetics. Here, you will briefly see how easy it is to adapt a Dentapreg splint. On the surface of the prepared teeth, you apply a thin layer of flowable composite. Then, you insert the strip and easily adapt it to the desired position. Then you light cure the strip, going tooth by tooth, around 40 seconds per tooth. As you can see, the procedure is relatively straightforward. The pre-impregnation process, unique to Dentapreg, applies the resin to the fibers on a molecular level. This creates a uniform and evenly distributed matrix that could never be achieved by common or manual application. That is what gives Dentapreg its clinical reliability. Dentapreg uses special glass fibers which provide the highest strength and tension. As we learned, this is the key mechanical attribute of the splint. The higher strength and tension, the thinner the splint you're able to have. So the subtle dimensions plus the color and opacity, when combined with flowable, provides the final outstanding aesthetics. In addition, to help you even more, there is no special adhesives, no special composites, and no special instruments such as scissors required. Common fiber reinforced composites, FRC, are sometimes difficult to adapt due to high shape memory. Think about a rubber band wanting to return back to its original shape. In contrast, Dentapreg's low shape memory allows easy and fast adaptation of the splint. All these specific features of Dentapreg are the reasons for the extraordinarily high ratings by independent experts. Now we'll explain in detail the complete procedure for applying splints step by step. Decide the length of the splint. Measure the length using a strip of dental wax, dental floss, wedgets, or other appropriate tools. The ends of the strip should cover about two thirds of the width of the crown on the abutment teeth. Polish the surface of the splinted teeth using a non-fluoridated profi paste. Ensure a dry working area using cotton rolls or preferably a rubber dam. Isolate interproximal spaces. For periodontally compromised mobile teeth, it is better to use a firm isolating tool such as wooden wedges, which help you adjust the proper position of the teeth. Slightly prepare the tooth surface with a diamond burr. In case of post-trauma emergency situation, 
this step is not necessary. However, for palliative long-term stabilization, a slight lingual groove may be required. Etch the surface with a standard etching gel following the manufacturer's instructions. Rinse the etching gel thoroughly. Dry the surface of the teeth. Apply a thin layer of an adhesive system on the etched surface of the teeth. Light cure the adhesive according to the manufacturer's instructions. Cover the bonding area with a thin layer, about half a millimeter, of flowable composite. It's important at this point that you do not cure. Thanks to the chemical compatibility of Dentapreg, you can use whichever light curing flowable composite you prefer. Break the blister to separate one compartment with the strip. Then, open the aluminum cover of the compartment and remove the strip. Cut the strip with any clinical scissors to the required length. With Dentapreg, no special tools for cutting the strip are required. Remove the protective foil and paper. We recommend not touching the unprotected strip with bare hands. The use of powder-free gloves is recommended. A quick tip, the easiest way to remove the foil and paper is to snip a little somewhere in the middle of the length of the strip obviously avoiding cutting the fibers. Then, peel the paper away from the plastic foil. Removing the remaining protecting paper and foil is then very easy. Return the unused portion of the strip to the blister and place the blister in the light safe box. Store in a dark, cool place, preferably in a refrigerator. You can store it for up to two weeks without deteriorating the properties of the strip significantly. Place the strip in the layer of flowable composite. Sink the strip into the flowable composite on one end. Slightly keep it in place with an appropriate instrument, such as a dentaprick fork, and continue placing the rest of the strip going tooth by tooth from one end to the other. It is important to not bend the strip into the interproximal spaces. By simply sinking the strip into the layer of flowable composite, you actually increase the overall strength of the splint. Adapt the strip to the tooth surface. The correct position is important. The strip should be placed in the middle third of the height of the crown and two thirds of the width of the crown on the abutment teeth, and it should follow the points of contact. When the strip is adapted to the correct position, Light cured for 40 seconds per tooth, going tooth by tooth from one end of the splint to the other. It is highly recommended to shield the uncured part of the splint against light because it prevents curing of the rest of the strip. An uncured strip is able to be adjusted, however, when trying to adjust an already cured strip, it will cause fracture of the fibers and reduction of loading capacity and reliability of the splint. For shielding, you may use any appropriate tool, such as a dental mirror, or more conveniently, a dentapreg shield, an instrument specifically developed for this purpose. Cover the entire surface of the splint with a layer of flowable composite. Keep in mind that this layer serves as a masking layer and provide the splint its final color. But this layer contributes to the final rigidity of the splint as well. A more viscous and thicker layer of composite creates a more rigid splint. Using a flowable composite gets you a splint allowing physiological movement of the teeth, while using more viscous composite gets you a rigid splint, appropriate in specific situations in trauma treatment. If there are interproximal contacts missing, you should reconstruct them by extending the width of the crown with an appropriate veneering composite because it is always necessary to cover the strip with composite on all sides, this is a good way to ensure proper functionality as well. 
Light cure the flowable composite according to the manufacturer's instructions. Remove any excess flowable composite as you normally would. Finish the splint surface by polishing. So that's it. Now you have a splint that's aesthetic by being hardly noticeable. You've created a structure that is minimally invasive and you didn't need any special tools or any special products that you wouldn't normally have in your office. So let's talk about removing the splint after it has served its desired aims. There are three steps to removing a strip. First, you must remove the masking layer of composite and that can be done in two ways. The first option is to remove the composite by using a burr. A second option is to use a rubber polishing wheel to heat the surface of the composite. The heated composite becomes soft and can then be removed with a scaler. Next, you should remove the strip from the tooth surface. Again, this can be done in two ways. Most commonly, dentists will use a scaler and pull from the interproximal spaces. If you have orthodontic pliers, they may be used as well, again, pulling from the interproximal spaces. Finally, you'll just want to clean and polish the teeth. For perio splints, post-ortho retentions, and post-trauma splints, Dentapreg SFM is an ideal product. SFM is 5 cm long, their width is 2 mm, and the thickness is just 0.2 mm. This subtle shape accommodates about 7,300 individual fibers. The fibers are braided for enhanced pliability. Dentapreg SFM is available in two different packages. The basic package contains eight strips. In addition to the strips, you will also receive relevant literature and also a light safe box for keeping the strip in an open blister for future use. The smaller package, a mini refill, contains three strips with the same dimensions with relevant literature. While one of the special aspects of Dentapreg is that no special tools are required, we have developed two tools that make the job even easier. Dentapreg Shield is an ideal tool for protection of the Dentapreg strip against light during light curing. Dentapreg Fork is an ideal tool for adaptation of the Dentapreg strip to the required position. As you can see, the patient had periodontally compromised teeth, which required a midterm stabilization during the curative treatment. We can see that the doctor has placed wooden wedges to ensure the proper position. Also, notice the use of a rubber dam to keep the working area dry. And in the final picture, we can see the final splint. Notice the fact that with the dentapreg strip and a fine layer of flowable composite, the splint is hardly recognizable, and how this would compare aesthetically with a similar metal splint. As a final thought, we would like to end this webinar with an actual success story told to us by Dr. Kahn of Danville, Illinois. He had an 87-year-old patient who suffered from Parkinson's disease. Uh, she had a splinted unit in the maxillary arch between 9, 10, and 11, which had broken and the segments were very mobile. Uh, what he realized right off the bat was that because of her Parkinson's disease, she couldn't hold her head still for even a second or two, so how in the world was he going to get these pieces back together and, and get them solid? So he etched the tooth and he was able to get the bonding agent on it, even though her head moved. Uh, he was able to place the dentapreg strip on the teeth, on the, on the labial surface, and it stuck. Uh, in the end, he made the splint, even in these trying conditions. So here's Dr. Khan. Um, I highly uh, recommend this material because of its versatility, but also because it solved a problem for me here in the movement of her head. And uh, that's my story. For more information, you can go to dentapreg.com or call us toll free at 1-866-697-5266. Thank you for your time.